वेलकम टुडे वी वुड स्टार्ट विद वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स एंड दैट्स द प्रैक्टिकल्स इन ज्योग्राफी द फर्स्ट चैप्टर टॉकिंग अबाउट मैप्स नाउ वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट अर्थ इट्स जियोइड इन शेप now this geoid shape is pretty interesting because this is a unique three dimensional shape when you try to cut it across what would happen it would open up in a 2d surface or a two dimensional surface but there would be actual distortions that would be seen these distortions would be in terms of distance in terms of area in terms of direction so these are some of the three major distortions that we would try to focus on all these distortions are addressed through the concept of projections which we would understand as we move forward with our lectures now whenever i am trying to cut a three dimensional surface into a two dimensional surface it would open up in certain fashion and this is how we represent the maps the atlas that you usually see in very simple language but this map would be called map only and only if it has a scale if it is without a scale we call it as a sketch now understanding the difference what is a scale a scale simply means i am trying to put the map distance by the ground distance so let's say on map it's 1 cm and on ground it is 200 km so i am trying to represent that 1 cm is equal to 200 km i can do it by statement i can do it by representative fraction all that we will study in the next class so that's how we understand the scale now besides the scale what are other interesting things in the map there are numerous colors so there are colors which signify whether it's a mountain whether it's a plateau whether it's a plain again there are symbols some symbols are for mines for copper for steel for iron for industries so for different things you use different symbols if it's a point location which could be marked we use symbol if it is a area location we use usually colors to denote it and then we usually do a shading so those are all different types of content that we understand and when we talk about the map now this map i can say uh as i said the first is the sketch with is which is without a scale the next is the map which has a scale which is depicting something on the real ground the next thing i try to understand is the projection projection means a spherical three dimensional surface is being represented on a two dimensional sheet and that is what is a projection is i am trying to represent something which is three dimensional on a plain sheet of paper and this would definitely come with distortions which we would understand as we move in our higher classes the next is cadastral maps cadastral maps are drawn to scale they are large scale maps so they usually show uh, the property boundaries they show each parcel of land that could be clearly demarcated and those are some of the important elements now what are the things that we need to take into consideration while making a map map has a scale we'll understand this in the next lecture but the sole idea here is this scale is very very essential because this is the only thing that differentiates it from a sketch so a real map and a sketch has the major difference which is scale the next is the projection that we already discussed the third is the generalization now what is generalization generalization means whenever we are drawing certain map it has certain objectives i can depict area i can depict rivers i can depict mountains i can depict settlement or select certain information and simplify it so that is what is map generalization the next is designing the map so i select certain appropriate symbols the size the forms the style of arrangement of various elements the legend is prepared the last is the construction and the production so this is 
basically drawing it with pen and paper as the cartographers do but with advancement in technology now we are moving to softwares like AutoCAD where we can do the same thing on the computer screen. So making sure whether we are trying to do it on a piece of paper or a computer screen is a very essential element of map making. The next is the history of map making. Now it all started during the Mesopotamian civilization where you usually had the clay tablets and most of the olden maps were drawn on the clay tablets with a kind of stick that used to engross onto the clay tablets. Later on we say the foundations of modern cartography were laid down by Greeks and Arabs. So Greeks and Arabs were considered as an exemplar in cartographic techniques. They did a numerous research where they found out the circumference of the earth, ge geographical coordinates for map making and so on and so forth. In India, we all started during the Vedic period and later on, during the recent 19th and the 20th century, we say we have aerial photography, we have simulated map making techniques that are being used. In Indian uh, ancient times, we had the concept of seven Jambu, uh, the seven dweeps, of which Jambu dweep was considered as one of the dweeps. And then you have the uh, Sakara dweep and so on. So those were the classification that was given by the Indian scholars. You have scholars like uh, Aryabhat, Vahamir, uh, Bhaskaracharya who basically wrote the Siddhant or uh, the expressions that were mentioned as classical treaties. Similarly, uh, the concept of Mahabharata was laid down where earth was considered as round and it was believed that everything uh, on this globe has water that surrounds it. So Mahabharata laid the concept where earth was round and there was water all around it. Later on, you had map making techniques that were put during uh, action during the reign of Shesha Suri and later on Todarmal uh, was one of the pioneers who was believed as one of the best land surveyors of that time and he made most of the maps which were meant for revenue collection purpose. So revenue collection was again a major element of this. There are numerous topographical sheets that were prepared by Survey of India and finally you had uh, the Survey of India that came up in 1767 and later on the map of Hindustan was prepared in 1785. So that's how we begin with the history of map making. Talking on to the maps based on two criteria. So one is the scale of the map, the other is the functions. When I say scale of the map, I can clearly differentiate this into a large scale map and a small scale map. Large scale map can be further divided into a cadastral map and a topographical map. However, a small scale map can be divided into a wall map or a atlas map. Now, cadastral map, as we already talked about, it's usually the property boundaries, the land boundaries that are being demarcated. For village, we take a scale of 1 is to 4,000. For urban areas, we take a scale of 1 is to 2,000. That means you are depicting a small area and the minor details of that small area and therefore it's known as a large scale map. The next is topographical map topographical map are basically maps which talk about surveys so they are prepared in a series you have relief drainage land forest settlement that is explained under a topographical map the next are the small scale maps small scale maps are usually drawn on a large sheet of paper depicting a bigger area so they are meant gen for general information and general understanding for example wall map atlas map used for classroom teaching for basic understanding of a region so if i uh, go by the size i can say uh, atlas maps are uh, the scale of the atlas map is less than the scale of the wall map which is less than the scale of a topographical map and so on and so forth so this map has the smallest scale the atlas maps represent a huge amount of area on a smaller sheet of paper wall map represent the same area more or less on a bigger sheet of paper so the scale is 
uh, bigger as compared to the atlas map and then topographical map depicting further details and cadastral map for a very smaller area coming up with minute details so those are the classification based on scale make sure large scale map means that you are depicting a smaller area with more precision more detail now this word cadastral came from a french word which is called as uh, the cadastre and this cadastre means it's a register of the territorial properties that are there so talking about the ownerships based on the function i can differentiate map as a physical map or a cultural map physical map is one which focuses on the relief features the mountains the rivers geological map talks about the time period of evolution climate map talks about the climatic changes of the region and then you have the soil map which explains the soil details the next is the cultural map cultural map focuses either on the political boundaries the changes in the political boundaries it talks about economic features the agriculture the industry it focuses on population and then finally you have transportation that is shown now this cultural map also explains population in terms of the age uh, age categories the sex categories talks about the literacy level the levels of educational attainment occupational structure and so on and so forth coming on to the next important thing is usage of the map so maps are definitely used to measure the distance so distance between place a and place b is measured by map how do we measure it there are two ways to measure it i can straight forward draw a straight line use a divider take the distance between the two points and measure it on the scale so i have a uh, distance that's there i take a divider put the two points here if it's a straight line and then i put the same divider onto the scale and see how much distance is there then based on the scale that i have i convert it into the real ground distance let's say my uh, distance comes up to be 5 cm and my scale is 1 is to 2000 that means 1 cm is equal to 2000 so this 5 cm line would depict how much it would depict 10000 cm or 100 meters so that's how i explain my straight line distance measurement the next is distance measurement using a thread so if it is a curved line or a zigzag line i can move the thread along it and finally i can stretch that piece of thread measure that length and convert multiply it with the scale and convert it into the ground value so that's the method 2 the method 3 is the use of rotameter rotameter has a wheel which moves along the route and it traces the path of the route or the distance covered so that's how you measure the distance the next is measuring the direction so direction usually we say it's the angular position to the common base and usually any map that we draw we align it to the north so we make the maps with the alignment of north as a convention however these directions that are given are known as cardinal points they are marked as north south and east and west and then in between you would have northeast northwest southwest and southeast as the directions the last thing that we would understand today is the most interesting concept and that is the concept of measuring the area now when i want to measure the area how can i do it there are two simple ways for it the first is the use of a illuminated table and the second is which is a kind of approximation measure and the second is the use of planimeter now let's first understand the concept of illuminated table i have a table here i have certain lights on the lower side now on this glass table i keep a piece of map on that i keep a piece of paper which has square markings now when i have this square marking paper that is there this piece of area that is drawn i can bifurcate that into the number of squares that are there okay so what i do is based on that area that is covered i have certain squares that are cut now i count the total number of squares and also the partial squares i convert those partial squares i add those partial squares trying to convert that into a whole figure and let's say my total uh, value comes out to be 90 
ओके सो देर देर आर 90 स्क्वायर्स फॉर एग्जांपल दैट आई हैव काउंटेड हियर और लेट्स सिंपलीफाई दिस आई कीप इट सिंपल आई मेक इट 10 स्क्वायर्स फॉर योर सिंपलिसिटी सो आई हैव 10 स्क्वायर्स दैट आर काउंटेड ऑफ व्हिच 8 वर द होल स्क्वायर्स एंड रिमेनिंग मेड आउट ऑफ द पार्शियल स्क्वायर्स दैट वर देयर नाउ दिस 10 वुड बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द स्क्वायर ऑफ द मैप स्केल सो लेट्स से माय मैप स्केल इज 1 इज 200 okay so what i do is i square this 100 and once i square this 100 i multiply it with the square of the 100 this 10 and therefore i get my answer now to understand it further simplified way what i can do is let's say i create a square of 1 by 1 cm so this area is 1 cm square the next area is 1 cm square and so on and so forth so i have 10 cm square as the total area that i have and i have a map scale is of 1 is to 1000 let's say so i multiply it by 10 into 1000 square and that's the centimeter square then i can convert it into meter square or kilometer square whatever is required the next important thing is use of planimeter now before i explain you the planimeter let's understand this very simple concept i have a stick here with a roller or a uh, wheel that moves now what would happen if i move this roller perpendicular this wheel would move and when this wheel would move it would trace certain area and that would be the height of this parallelogram to explain back i have a wheel with a rod and i move in this direction so this would be the area traced or this would be the height of the parallelogram that this wheel would cover if i want to calculate this area how i can do is i would see the length of the rotation that this wheel covers multiplied by the total distance or the length of the stick and that would give me the area of the parallelogram so that's very very simple to understand but understand this again i have this rod with a wheel now rather than moving front and back or perpendicular what i move is i move it sideways when i move it sideways this wheel does not move and since this wheel does not move there is no height of the parallelogram that is traced and therefore i cannot measure the uh, area in this case but let's say this moves in a zigzag fashion so the same roller rather than moving on a straight line it moves on a zigzag fashion like this so this would be the area traced by the roller but i understand it this way there are two motions one is the motion which is perpendicular to the wheel and the next is the twist and the turn since the twist and the turn is around the axis the net value the net value at the last would be zero and there would be no value addition that would be done by this twist and turn all this concept is explained by a simple concept of what is known as the green theorem or the gilds theorem both the theorems focused on the integral of the parallelograms so the idea is under a planimeter what happens is you have numerous small parallelograms that are drawn you take the sum of all the areas of the parallelogram and that's basically the integral function of the areas of the parallelogram so the integration is explained by the gilds and the greens theorem we won't go into that detail but understanding the functioning of the planimeter let's say it's a polar planimeter so what would happen you would have one end that would be connected and from this end you would have a arm that would have a marker here now this marker would move to trace let's say this circle so this marker here would move and trace this circle now when this marker is tracing this circle this point where you have the values or the calculation of the area that is being represented directly on a planimeter you don't want to calculate it further you already have the length of the arm that is the length of the stick you can understand that and the roller that moved would be this point of the planimeter that's moving and this point of the planimeter that's moving is traced by this rotameter that's there and this meter would 
take out the length that has been covered it would multiply this length with the length of the arm and give you the area of the parallelogram or the area of the not the parallelogram the closed space that is there now understand it in a very interesting way this is the area this is the closed path that it has to cover now when tracing this region my stick is let's say this side so when i am tracing this region this area would be covered okay so this area would have a positive value now as soon as i need to trace the remaining area my stick would follow only this region it would not cover this region and there would be a similar value that would be traced on the other side so in this case this value won't be traced however in this case this value and the difference would be traced so when we try to find out the area covered it is simply put as the difference of the areas of these two region which would give you this region and that's how we calculate the area of the closed region so the sole idea i repeat again is in the first case when we talked about the determination of the area what we did was a illuminated table cutting down the squares and measuring those squares counting those squares and finally letting you know the, the answer but in this case when we are using planimeter that square could have been replaced by longitudinal sections or smaller parallelograms rather i could say when i am not doing a square i could do a parallelogram i can cut the same region into longitudinal lines that could be there and i could find out the area of each of those lines but with a planimeter we do the same thing we break this down into smaller parallelograms okay and when we are doing uh, the addition of the values there would be some areas where the values would be added in other areas it would be subtracted so there would be a balance of the addition and the subtraction that would be created and the remaining value that you would get here is the integration of the infinite number of parallelograms that would help you make that closed surface and that's one of the basic concepts of the planimeter functioning of the planimeter is indeed very simple so you have just a arm which is on a axis connected to measure that area so it moves and measures this area the distance the perimeter is measured and this perimeter gives you the area and that's the sole idea how you try to convert a perimeter into a area through the gills and the greens theorem and that's a very very important concept to understand so this was a very basic introduction we'll be covering many many lectures on these practical topics so stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead